Hey guys, Zish here again. Um, I wanted to do a bit of a check-in, but I also wanted to do an episode of Reading Interrupted, so I put some concealer on, a little bit of lipstick, made some coffee, and we're just going to combine all of it. So there are a few things I want to talk about. That inflection, though. Okay, so we're halfway through the month. I don't know how we got here. I mean, logically, I know how we got here, but I don't know how I got here. So for Climathon, there were nine prompts. I chose a book for every single prompt. Um, that is not so that I can pile on the pages. It's so that I could mood read within those nine prompts. Um, and then my POG TBR gave me like four or five books, which is totally, totally cool, right? And I, to say the least, I'm struggling to get through these books that I've chosen for myself. Um, but that's okay, and here's why. Um, I've been feeling the pressure of having to up the number of books that I've been reading every month. And that's because I had a month off of, from school this summer, and so like I was able to read all those books. And I feel like I have to keep up with that that um, that bar that I set for myself, and I don't. The next couple of books that I'm going to talk about are for Climathon. Four books I'm going to talk about are these bad boys. Um, so let's go through them. I started the month off with L.A. Weather. Um, this is supposed to be to fulfill the fiction prompt um, for a climb -along. And I, I was really excited about this. Like, super excited about this. But since the beginning of the month, I've only read 40 pages. I'm not quite sure what's happening. I'm not like thrilled to pick this up. I'm not calling it a DNF because a month is not up, but maybe I'm just not in the mood for a domestic drama and a dystopian novel where <laughs> the climate in LA where I live, you know, is uh, burning up. The next book that I want to talk about that I started is How the Universe Got Its Spots by Jan 11. I just started this a few days ago. It's a selection of essays. Um, Jana is a, an astrophysicist, um, and this is a diary form. They're letters to her mother. And this is interesting so far. This fulfills my POG prompt for mathematics, because literal math. But anyway, I have to read the first line of this to you. So it says, so, chapter one, is the universe infinite or is it just really big? And the very first line of this, first essay, is some of the great mathematicians kill themselves. I read that and I lost it because it's like, okay, die, should, should this really be reeling me in? But it did. It did. Um, but because this is a selection of essays, I'm going to read like an essay a day or an essay every two days and hopefully I'll get it done by the end of the month. Um, what I'm gathering from this so far is that, okay, so I've also only read eight pages. So I've read the first essay. She goes into like the philosophy of being a mathematician and like how hard it is to be a, a genius of sorts or a person who has dedicated themselves to something math or not math or otherwise i should say and how it can be absolutely consuming you kind of have to go where it goes it also defines who you are within the industry and if your proof doesn't pass the peer circle, I guess. Mental health. Mental health, that's all I gotta say. The reason, here's the reason I'm making this video. 
I'm making this video specifically because of these two books. Um, the Names of All the Flowers by Melissa Valentine and The Enlightenment of the Green Gage Tree by Shokufe Azar. This is the first and the only book that I've completed this month. This fulfills the mental health prompt for Climathon. Um, and when I say I'd be okay if I didn't read all the books that I set out for myself this month, this is why. This is just like enough for me to think about the entire month and probably the next month. Melissa's, I think this is Melissa's debut book. This memoir, let me tell you guys, this memoir. I was reading this and it's 300 pages, 302 pages, and I was reading and reading and reading, and it's like never ending. Like it would never end. I could not find the end of this book. And you know what? That's okay. Because her writing is beautiful, her ability to re recollect her memories, feelings, and experiences are impeccable. And I felt like I was her as she was telling us who she was and who she is and why she is who she is now. So you follow Melissa, who is one of five or six kids, um, and she is biracial. Her father is white Quaker from Philadelphia. Her mother is a black Southern woman. And we learn about their relationship as lovers and parents. We learn about her relationship to her siblings. Um, she was closest to Junior, her most immediate older brother. He protected her like none other. He was always there. He always gave her a reason to find joy in the mundane. And so, also, I don't know if I can spoil this because a lot of this is written in the back. So, when he is murdered on the side of the road in Oakland at the age of 20 by what they say is a gang rival, or excuse me, a rival gang member, it is just like the most heartbreaking thing ever. And I'm not saying that, you know, he is more special than anybody else. Or, you know, that he isn't as special as anybody else. But the way Melissa writes, it's like you want to jump into this memoir and you want to cradle them and you want to hug them and you want to save Junior. Because the relationship she had with them is just like such an honest sibling relationship. Anyway, I want to share with you... The very first part of the book that I tabbed, the very first section or um, sentence, and this is from the introduction. This book is my love letter to those who mourn every day. And I think that is such a generous statement because I, I know that in my own experience dealing with grief, I wanted to be a bit childish about it. and go, no, this is my grief. This is mine. But here's Melissa sharing the heartache, her own heartache, but also willing to sympathize and empathize with others in this world, in this community. The very last sentence that I tabbed in this is let's see the last paragraph I should say standing on the oldest graves in my lineage I look around and ask back to the grief the sorrow what have I come here to do what where do I go now what do I do and I think I can hear junior in his joyful boy voice ahead of me as always saying come on 
motioning me to catch up, motioning me forward. And I'm talking about this and I want to cry. Um, there's absolutely no way I can read this again and not cry. So, okay, that's a lot more than I wanted to say. But if there's, I want to say there's one memoir you read this year, it's this one. There's actually, this is two. There's two memoirs. Um, one, I can't show, the other one I can't show you because I packed everything, basically, all my books already. But if you are wondering which memoir to pick up, which book to pick up by a biracial woman, which book to pick up about racism, classism, violence, um, school to prison pipeline, or gentrification, because she talks so much about gentrification, and how much anybody really wants, or any all that Junior and wanted was a little bit of power, because growing up black in America, or even half black, your power is stripped from you before you even know you have any. Do you know what I mean? Like, and so to desire anything, to want anything, is taboo if you are black in America. And I just think the way Melissa relayed that information made me think about things in a whole new way. So do yourself a favor and pick up this book. The Names of All the Flowers by Melissa Valentine. And then here's The Enlightenment of the Green Gauge Tree. This is the third book I've started and have not finished yet this month. And when I started reading this, I could not help but continue to think about Valentine's memoir. Here's why. <clears throat> Excuse me. First of all, I should say that I'm only 66 pages into this. Um, this one is about a half black, half white woman in Oakland and growing up in the 90s. Oakland, California. This is a fictional story about a girl who is dead coming back to be with her family as a ghost. She dies as a 13 year old during and following the Iranian revolution. There's a lot of violence, a lot of political upheaval, a lot of distrust um, within community members and just like it's always like the people in the government, right? People against the big old man. Anyway, when I was reading this, I thought about Valentine's memoir because they each talk about what it's like for a mother to not know where her child is. Um, I should say that Junior ends up in prison. He got caught up in something. He was charged for something that he didn't he wasn't fully aware of doing. It's uh, complicated, honestly. Um, and so we've got a son who is in trouble in prison. We have Valentine's mother wondering where the heck Junior is after two or three nights of being gone and finally, eventually, out, finally finding out that he was in jail. And so she's just so thankful he's alive and that she knows where he is at least. And in this one, we have the only son in the family who also goes to prison, but this time um, it's because he's standing up against the government that's being taken over by these not so nice people, these like extremist religious people. You know, the son is taken up, uh, taken in the middle of the night from his bed and just taken away and the family doesn't really know what's going on. Um, and then there's a moment in here where there's a villager who's going around, who's like, who, not a villager, excuse me. There's a man who's been traveling with a bunch of letters prisoners wrote because the prison guards never sent the letters to their families, so the families never knew where they were. So he's going around and handing these letters to these families. And 
this man is a former prisoner and he was just always like my mother never came to visit me but then he realizes because she never got any of his letters she didn't know where he was or how to see him or if he wanted to see her and stuff like that and that moment is just a profound moment because I don't know what it's like to be a parent but I've seen my mother you know react if I come home an hour late as a teenager or whatever and so we have another scene here about mothers and children who have been separated and don't know where their their whereabouts and these are adults right sort of right mostly adults late teens early 20s and it's just so heartbreaking but also they're just so similar in that sense we have an Iranian man and we have a half black man who don't fit into society's parameters or who the government deems as not trustworthy or a threat um, and I think these were accurate climathon picks because gentrification is, is a thing and is part of climate change as far as affordability war and violence affects the climate and it affects people nature animals and the environment all around um there's a scene that is described in this novel where the government anti-government people i'm sorry i don't remember the names i gotta read more of this to really get it in my brain um i think plow through a village and ruin farms and food and the winters here are cold they're not livable but we'll see what happens and so while i was reading this i was interrupted with thoughts of this that's what I wanted to share with you guys <laughs> if these are the only two books that I finished this month I'm okay with that and the quality of these is enough to sustain me for months I won't lie I hope that maybe some of the stuff I said made sense <laughs> was a bit coherent um, but my brain is so wrapped up in these books that I'm so happy that I was able to like read them and share them with you and I hope that you guys will read some of it too and let me know how you feel about it